All right, all right, guys. This is Acer of Spades over here with OTL in Province 93. I am coming to you today with Rise of Empires, Fire and Ice, Building Day, Class of Provinces. This is going to be an incredible video. We are literally going to learn how to prepare, what to avoid, and how to maximize so that you also can be in the top 10% of your province. I say that, guys, because I have literally bought Project Hero one time as well as one construction worker for the $5, totaling $30 of my own personal cost, and I'm consistently top five in my province in Clash of Provinces. Now, I'm sitting at Castle 19, and I want to show all of you exactly what I do, how you can easily beat me, especially if you spend money in the game. So, Stay tuned for the advanced version of this day in the future, as well as all the Clash of Provinces videos that I'm going to have coming out for each and every single day. Let's get started. So as you can imagine, guys, without any guidance whatsoever, building day can actually be one of the hardest and one of the most challenging days to master. And it's easy to make a lot of mistakes. I mean, the game is riddled with pitfalls. They do not give you any tier levels. They don't tell you what's best or what's worse. So I'm here to do that for you. Here is exactly how you properly prepare. Number one, you are supposed to use your resources that you save from Hero Day, Training Day, and of course, KE for Building Day, obviously Gathering Day as well. So to prepare, I would highly suggest that you utilize food and iron. Food is easy and plentiful to come by. Um, iron, you're not going to want to use too much on Tech Day as it is super expensive. Obviously, the further down you get, the more of it you're going to need regardless. So guys, that's why I always say only gather iron. And if you watch my gathering day video in the description below, you will see why. Tech day obviously would mean it is food, lumber, and marble intensive. And we're going to go over all of that on the tech day video. So stay tuned. So number two, you want to constantly be making crystal all the time guys obviously i'm pretty spent right now i'm gonna have to hit my farms a few times but i need to have these crystal factories working at all times side note make sure the crystal factories that you see on minor 19 currently because i'm at castle 19 only upgrade them as well on building day so you need to be doing this all weekend long you're going to want to hit your farms you're going to want to raid if you are a trader which is the next best class in my personal opinion um you're going to have massive amounts of money as well but nothing works faster than a raider who is hitting things and nothing does better than that commercial port that I gave in my tip videos also in the description below. Trading house rather. So you're going to want to use that as much as possible to get as much money as possible. Next preparation is all major upgrades are to be done on building day only. A lot of people jump the gun and they try to get things faster than they should. But let me give you a quick rundown list so you know exactly what I mean. You need to have your garrison hall only ever upgraded on building day. You're going to want to do the same thing with your ration. You don't want to do anything with that any other day. Your war rooms over here only on building day. Don't overdo them. Save them because you will need them. And anything that has to do with shouts, your dragon shout buildings. Every single one of these should only ever be upgraded on building day. Do not touch them any other day. And you will absolutely maximize each and every one of those things outside of the garrison hall, as well as the training grounds and things like that. They require massive amounts of crystal. That's what the crystal preparation is for. And that's how you're going to get massive points. So assuming you did an excellent job on hero day and training day, and you have all these resources and you went out in KE and you farmed the mess out of your enemy state, you're going to have plenty of crystal and you're going to have no problem doing these high labor intensive buildings for building day like myself, even at only castle 19. Obviously, the bigger you get, the more you're going to be able to grab and the easier this day becomes. Now, let's go over into what exactly we need to avoid. No matter what, guys, the first major tip on avoidance is never upgrade your warehouses on building day. They give you virtually no points. And for video purposes, because this is a video and not an audio book, let's go through this and go through the details. Let's just say I pick any one of these buildings, such as the ale storage, and I go to more information. If I upgrade it, even at its highest level, guys, it's going to give me 3,000 points. That's absolutely nothing. That's ridiculous. If I'm at level 13 on my footman war room, as an example, and I just go from 13 to 14, I'm going to get 
uh, 2,200 points that way. And then the next level is going to give me 29. And then the next looks like 3,700 points. And I'm not even close to 19. As you can see, if I went from 18 to 19, that's going to give me almost 7,000. It's about 6,500 points or double what the warehouses will do. It will also cost me less, believe it or not. And on top of that, I'm going to have lots and lots of points with ease if I focus on them. You can easily see my point. So when you do the actual warehouses, what you want to do with them is you want to do them on the weekends. You're going to get hopefully lots and lots of uh, resources from, again, Hero, Training, and KE. And that's when you want to spend that on those warehouses so that when you have, like on training day, which we'll go over another video, lots of speed up hours, that's when you cash in your speed ups on those warehouses, which take days in some cases. I'm sure you guys already know. The next thing to avoid is resource generating buildings. Now, granted, they are what I'd like to call a medium tier building. These medium tier buildings, such as your lumber makers or your mint factories here and ale houses, whatever you want to call them, they will give you decent points, much better than the warehouses. And they do cost less time, but they cost a lot of money. And in some cases, millions of a specific type of resource. So if I want to upgrade my quarry, obviously it's 1.6 million of that. And if I wanted to upgrade anything else, I mean, we could just pick like, let's say this, the farm. Well, 1.6 million of that. Those 1.6 millions are costing way too much to give you nowhere near as what you need. Whereas I do have to spend the 4.5 million, but I'm getting almost 10 times the points in some cases. So what you do want to do with your resource generating buildings, if you have excess resources from gathering day and such, is you want to go ahead and start them and end them on hours that you're only capable of getting a purple chest. That would be the best bet and only use them for filler. When you're getting your purple chest, guys, like I talk about in my tip videos, you're going to want to make sure that you only use those purple chests up to the purple chest. In my particular case, that's going to be 580 points. In order to do that, I might do a very small tech, which I shy against, but if it's something really basic, then I'll do that. Like on my fourth legion, something really small. Or I will fill it in if I have the hour that gives me training speed ups, I'll fill it in with training speed ups just to get almost exactly at 580 as much as possible. Hopefully, getting purple chests each and every day constantly. That is the goal because that's going to fuel the rest of your day and leave you with lots of resources. Then, of course, the final thing that you're going to want to avoid is, like I just mentioned, doing tech on building day. Guys, it's tomorrow. I know that's obvious, but people mess this up nearly every single day. What will happen is like my zone's only at 20 percent and mine is obviously running right now. And this is one of the mistakes you don't want to do. Obviously, I did that specifically for this video purpose. I need you guys to fully understand that no matter how far in zone I am or I'm not, you do not want to go ahead and start doing zone, which is very, very, very important for tech day because it gives you massive amounts of points on building day. It will ruin you. Now, the cool part is, like I gave in my tip videos, you can just log off and not log on until the day starts and then it will actually count for tech day. Again, time upgrades, guys. Huge, huge thing. So avoid doing tech if at all possible on building day. Just do it on th tomorrow. So let's get into the most important part of this video, and that is talking about how to maximize. So in order to do that, to really get these points and just to absolutely collapse, I mean, outside of people who absolutely spend a decent amount of money in this game, as well as individuals who are at a much higher level than I am, because I'm only at Castle 19. Some of these guys are uh, Castle 22, Castle 23, 24. Um, outside of that, they're not really keeping up with me. So obviously I got all my chests. I can only get six right now and that's completely opened up and I stopped obviously right where I needed to. I could keep going. The entire point is maximizing is using the double dip method. So on building day, every hour except for one will give you points for building on your daily challenge hours. So that's the fourth hour, by the way, and that one's going to be only any speed ups. And of course, if you have something that takes a long time, like a war room to upgrade or a ration drug, you're going to want to use your speed ups on that hour, at least to get purple chests, um, because trying to get gold on speed up hours is foolish unless you're like 23 or above. So stay purple on any speed up hours, by the way. Now, this means that you can double dip, though, on every hour that doesn't have that one before or after it. 
meaning every other hour in, in the entire day. So these hours are on an eight hour rotation. So once you pass the any speed up hour, you pretty much have eight more hours that you can potentially double dip. So what double dip means is when you go into your castle and your town buffs and you go into your uh, increased classes of provinces score, and you use hopefully a 100% ticket, obviously I used all mine today, what you will use is your 100% ticket to go ahead and maximize and you will pop that five to 10 minutes left in the hour so that the 30 minutes that it lasts actually covers two full hours allowing you to get potentially two gold chests back to back all under one single ticket yielding massive amount of class of zone points and recovering most of the resources that you spent on upgrades in the first place. The best time on building day, even though you can do it just about any hour, depending on your resource amounts, would be right after that any hour speed up hour. And the reason that is, is you can imagine if you started these buildings much earlier, hopefully on the weekend, especially things that take two days, or you started something right there and then, if you speed it up on that hour, you get the chest for that. Then the next following hour at the end of it, you can pop that ticket and then end them on that hour to maximize those points. And then the couple that you have left, hopefully, you could end them on the next hour, potentially getting both sets of gold chests. If you're on a lower, lower level than 19, then go for two purple. The whole point is still double dipping. Even if it's only two purple chests, it absolutely still counts. And this, by the way, works for all the days, meaning tech day hero day and training day and i'll show you how in, in those videos but if you do this literally just twice meaning starting at five to ten minutes left on the hour letting that buff roll over to the next hour and at the start of it finishing more you will probably completely finish all six chests if you're only at six chests like me or get really really close and i'm talking specifically for individuals who are castle 19 or better Still, the double dip method works all the time. I do it on my farms on Hero Day. I do it all the time for everything. And guys, if you follow this exactly and you do not go over your chest so that you can serve as much as you can, you're going to beat me every single time, guys, because I'm not spending any money. So what does that tell you? If you spend any money in this game and you're watching my guide and you do exactly what I'm telling you, you already won. I don't need to be at the top of the charts. I want to help as many people as possible. And if this video even remotely helped you guys, like and subscribe, man. Leave me a shout down in the... Uh, in the comment section below. And if you're in my state, um, say I sent you. All right, guys. Acer of Spades, and I'm signing out.